StarCast 5, presented by CarShield, July 29th to 31st in Nashville, Tennessee at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Loaded with stage shows including Rene Paquette's sessions with the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, Soraya, Turning the Page, The Horsemen reunite on stage for one last ride, and Bret Hart's look back at 30 years later on his SummerSlam Classic. And of course, StarCast will be capped off by Ric Flair's last match. Follow the story leading up to the last match over at rickflairslastmatch.com. Tickets and information available at StarCast.com. Well, let's talk about these uh, these AEW injuries, because I got a lot of updates here for everybody. So first off, AEW is able to extend a wrestler's contract when they've been out of action due to injury. Dave Meltzer addressed the issue, Friday's edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. If you're wondering if, when guys are out of action... If AEW can extend their contract like WWE does, their contracts do allow for that, and it has happened, he wrote. Probably the most notable example of WWE freezing a contract involves Rey Mysterio in May of 2014. Mysterio's contract was set to expire, but WWE extended it by a year due to the time he missed while injured. The company eventually granted him his release in February of 2015. He began performing for AAA and later Lucha Underground afterwards. So, yeah, he actually took years off of, of WWE, but still celebrated his 20 years of WWE on Raw Monday. WWE's ability to freeze a contract also applied to Brian Danielson's status with the company in 2016. And, uh, of course, the whole situation there was Vince McMahon told Danielson he wouldn't release him worse. He couldn't even sit patiently by, let his injuries heal, get in shape, and wait for his contract to expire. WWE, in its contracts, has the right that if a wrestler is injured for a considerable length of time, they can freeze the time frame of his or her contract. The time left on the contract does not start rolling until they are ready to work in the ring and fulfill it as an active wrestler. Daniel's time was uh, frozen on his contract until he could return. But the Ice Age would never end since he would never be cleared to return and fulfill that time left. So really the only way he got out of his contract was he actually got himself cleared to return, finished out the contract, and then left and went to AEW. So that was the situation with Brian Danielson. And uh, and so here we go. Ready? Dante Martin, according to PW Insider, has a knee injury. He was on crutches backstage and at the hotel. Severity of the injury... And Martin's timetable for return is unknown. Of course, if you watched the match, he was selling his, his ankle and his knee afterwards. And uh, and so, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's hurt. Dax Harwood has a torn labrum. And the match against the Briscoes at Death Before Dishonor made things worse. Dax Harwood is the latest AW wrestler working with a torn labrum, wrote Dave. After the Briscoes match, he came out of it with a swollen eye, a stiff neck, and a bad shoulder that was made worse. Daddy Magic is out of action with a shoulder injury. Also suffered at Blood and Guts. The word is he is going to attempt to rehab it and not undergo surgery. So that's where he was and wasn't on Wednesday night for that Dynamite show. We've also got Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly, both still out of action. So even though they announced that uh, they were going to return on the show Wednesday, they're returning in a television role, but neither of them have been cleared. So they're they're really making sure that Adam Cole is 100% before he comes back because he was injured in the Joe match, and then he came back and was immediately injured again. He already had a torn labrum. And they don't want him coming back and immediately getting injured again. So he's going to be out still for a while. I was told he is getting better. And then uh, Kyle O'Reilly also is probably going to be out for a little while. So lots of injuries. That's that's the latest there. And uh, on the subject of injuries, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday, apparently this this most recent set of of WWE tryouts, this was the uh, set of tryouts where a lot of NIL folks showing up trying to get deals, and uh, no independent wrestlers allowed, anything of that nature. The word is that this is probably the last time this is going to happen. They're not getting rid of the NIL program, but the this idea of no independent wrestlers, all NIL folks, Lash Legend and folks like that, you know, Ivy Nile and um, I think some of the... Uh, um, Anyway, point of this is there were a lot of injuries at this set of tryouts. There were there were several concussions. 
There were a lot of uh, folks trying out that got hurt. Um, it's a blind leading the blind. I mean, so anyway, it looks like the uh, the days of uh, all uh, college athletes, all attempting to get NIL deals, no independent wrestlers. It appears that's probably over. And uh, with Vince McMahon out of the picture, hopefully we'll go back to the sort of recruitment we were doing when Triple H was in charge of NXT, and he was open to using big names on the indie scene, open to using guys from Ring of Honor or that came from Ring of Honor or New Japan or whatever. So, yeah, I heard a lot of injuries. I heard a lot of them, quite frankly, sucked, and that it was, uh, yeah. I don't want to put words in anybody's mouths, but from what I heard, it sounded like it was a disaster. So that's the update on the latest WWE tryout. At some point, they're going to have to have a come to Jesus on the NIL things anyway, because they signed the Cavinder sisters, who everybody signed because they were really pretty and they were basketball players at, oh God, what was it? Stanford, I believe, some, somewhere out west in the, in the Pac-12. And... I figured they would break him out for WrestleMania or something like that. And just to say they were there or so, and they never did that. And you're paying these folks with the hope that after college, they're going to want to choose to become WWE wrestlers. And it's like, there's something about it that just doesn't make any sense to me because there's a lot of this where it's like, I mean, if I'm a high school kid going into college and I'm in college and I'm an athlete and I can now pimp my likeness out. I think that's great. But for WWE, like, you're going to have to see a return on this. And I don't know if it's <laughs> – we'll have to see. I mean, they, they signed – what was the kid from Oklahoma State who left school, uh, A.J. Ferrari or whatever his name is? Y you know, he's on an NIL deal. They, they have a couple, but it's like, why even do this? Why not just wait till their college career is done and then try to recruit them that way the same way you've always done it? I don't see where... Because I don't want AEW hiring kids. them. But the whole thing is you're signing a college kid for their NIL. There's nothing in that deal that says they have to become WWE wrestlers or they even have to try out. Nothing. So there's really no way for them to be stopped. Sangha versus Lee stands on Lee's chest when she's down. Bangs her, uh, her on the apron, pull, um, puts elbow on her chin, threw her out of the ring. You know, it doesn't really matter a lot in 2022, Granny, but uh, yeah. Lee, in fact, identifies as a man. <laughs> Legend time, versus woman. Perez. That was another NXT. Can you believe the little guy beat him? He beat Legend. A out. little guy? It's now wrong. Roxanne Perez is a man? Yeah. Roxanne. No. no, these were two women. <laughs> you got to be kidding me, Granny. you got to be kidding me today. God. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.